Hi, let's talk about absolute value inequalities. The first situation I would like to take a look at is when we have an absolute value on the left hand side is less than a positive number. This situation also works with when we have a less than or equal to instead of just less than. So it's for both of these inequality. And then uh, the procedure on how to solve this kind of inequality is you're just going to put the inside in between of or you can think about in the middle of this positive number and also just put a negative in front of that positive number and maintain whatever the sign is right there. So you are going to kind of like sandwich um, the inside in between of negative number and positive number of that. Okay? Another situation it's this, which is pretty similar, but then when we have absolute value, it's greater than the positive number. Again, it's for greater than and also for greater than or equal to. But in this situation, you are going to split into two different intervals, two different inequalities. Okay? And one way to remember uh, how many intervals do we have is, you can think about this is less than, so it has less amount of intervals. The solution that you should expect should just have one interval compared to more than or greater than. So greater than, you have more intervals, you're expecting to have more intervals, two intervals, it's more than one interval, okay? But um, this is just a procedure. I will also have an, another video on explaining like, why this works. But I would like to just show you on the procedures and how to work out some of um, these problems. The first example I would like to do is absolute value of one plus two x less than 11 and this is that situation when we have an absolute value of something inside it's less than a positive number so I'm just going to focus on this and then let's see how can we um, solve this inequality okay so we have the absolute value uh, isolated on the left hand side already we're going to break down this inequality we're going to take out the absolute value we are going to do so by just putting the inside, which is 1 plus 2x inside. And then we are going to put this in between of the positive 11. And we are also going to make the 11 negative. So we have negative 11 on the left hand side. And keep in mind, always a smaller number on the left hand side and a bigger number on the right hand side. And that's exactly what I mean by this procedure. Put the inside in the middle of a negative number and a positive number of that. And once we break down, once we take this inequality and write it like this, we're just going to solve this um, the usual way, I would say. Well, we are, our goal is to always isolate x, but here the x is in the middle. So we have to do the same procedure uh, to the left hand side, the middle side, and the right hand side. I have 1 plus 2x. I would need to first minus 1 on both, on three sides, okay? So I'll minus 1 right here to cancel this once. I also have to minus 1 right here, okay? I also put on minus 1 right here. Negative 11 minus 1 is negative 12. Maintain this symbol, maintain this inequality, and bring down the 2x, and also maintain this less than symbol. 11 minus 1 is 10. So we are almost there because we have 2x in the middle instead of just an x. Well, 2 times x, I can just uh, divide this by 2, I can cancel these 2's, and I also need to divide this by 2, divide that by 2. Negative 12 divided by 2, we get negative 6. Maintain that. And the inequality sign does not change because we divide by a positive number. We are going to change inequality only if we uh, divide by a negative number, but I will show you that uh, in the next example. But since the two was negative, since the two was positive, excuse me, since the two was positive, we didn't need to uh, switch the inequality. So negative twelve divided by two is negative six. In the middle, we just have an x, and then less than ten divided by two, which is five. So that's it, right? We isolated the x, we solved it, but whenever we are dealing with inequalities. There are two other things that we also need to look at. The first one is the graph. Because um, to present our answer, a graph is actually more visual. 
So that's one of the reasons why we like to uh, use a graph to represent an inequality. So on the number line, draw a number line first. I would like to indicate where the zero is first. And locate these two points. I have negative six. Okay. Over the located is let's say right here, negative six, and then five is right here. Okay. Then um, since this inequality symbol is just less than, so we are going to use an open circle. We are going to use an open circle at negative six and another open circle on the five. X is in between of these two numbers, it's bounding between, it's kind of like in the middle. So we are just going to shade it in the middle, like this. So this graph represents that inequality. Okay? And there's an, also another way to do, um, to do the graph. Um, also maybe let me make a note right here. Um, this is just the first way, so I'll just put first way for the second way. So on the exams, I think you can just do it one way and depends on uh, which way you prefer. Okay. Both ways are correct and I don't need this anymore. So second way, I will still locate where the zero is. I will uh, have the five here and mark the negative six right here. So instead of using open circle, because we don't want to include uh, the endpoints right here, right? Because it's just a less than. Instead of using open circle, let me make a note. We can use parentheses for the case when we have just less than or just greater than. But then we will have to use brackets, like the square bracket. When we have the case like less than and there's an also an equal to, another situation is like greater than equal to. So since we just have a less than, we do not want to include these two numbers these two points on the number line, we're just going to use parentheses. So I will put a wrong parentheses here and also another wrong parentheses there. And then I will color the middle. And you may be wondering why do we have to uh, do both or no. <laughs> why do we have two different number lines, right? Why do we have um, two different ways to graph number lines? On, on the test you can just do one, you don't need to do both. Um, this one is more visual because once you have the open circle, it's clear that you don't want to include the number negative six, you don't want to include the number uh, positive five. Okay? And if you choose to do the graph like this, with using um, parentheses or brackets, then, oops, not graph, we did a graph already. If you do this, you're actually done with what we call the interval notation. And this is how interval notation works. It's just like a condensed version of a graph or like a condensed version, condensed notation of the inequality. Once you have this, for the interval notation, you can look at the graph or you can just look at um, the inequality. You need to first tell me where is the, um, the left point, the starting point. You can think about that you're trying to go, okay, from left hand, uh, left end point to the other end on the right. That's the idea. We will start off by putting down negative six. That's your starting point. You are right here. Comma five. So left end point, the smaller number, it's always a smaller number first, and then the big number, the right end point. And then since we did not want to include a negative six uh, nor the five, we're just going to use parentheses right here and right there. Okay, so you can see that uh, we will. This is just you know parentheses negative six comma five. So I think you have seen this notation before, because if we are talking about graph a point graph of a coordinate point. negative six and five. If you are talking about just a point, like uh, x and y point, the first number means x, the second number means the y value. This looks like 
we are at negative 6 here, and then we have 5 right there. Right? And notice that they are exactly the same notation. They are exactly the same notation. So what we need to do is, we need to just kind of say it. This right here, it's the interval notation, and this represents this graph, or you can say this represents that inequality. They are the same. But then, if you really mean to say negative six comma five represents this point uh, on the x and y plane, you will need to say that's a coordinate point. Okay. So this is just kind of like a overlapping in terms of notations, and make sure that you just write down what you mean. Okay, what you mean. And we're not doing this. We're not doing the graph of the points. We're doing the graph of an. Um, inequalities and we're doing the interval notation and before I turn notice that right here I mark for less than and the other symbol less than or equal to the solution will just have one interval and that's what I mean we just have a one piece of interval and later on you will see the, uh, the solution that has like, two intervals okay. but this is it for now this is it for now and again, don't look at that. Just this.